Hello, and welcome to the I Believe series. On this series, we ask our guests what they believe that might be a counterintuitive belief. So we're delighted to have Eileen Schaefer with us today. Hi, Eileen. Hello, everybody, and hello, Senya. You may already know Eileen from this series as one of our executive coaches. But what you may not know is that Eileen, in addition to coaching over Zoom, like you might expect, or coaching over the phone, Eileen does coaching by walking with her clients. So we wanted to explore that further today. Hi, Eileen. Hello, hello. Nice to be here. Thank you. My first question for you is, what do you believe that others in your field would not agree with you about? So just take a moment and think about those situations where you kind of you're in the middle of the day and your brain feels like you forgot to recharge it or forgot to put batteries in. You're just going dry. You have to come up with a solution. No solutions to be had. Not a creative gene in your body. You feel like, what is wrong with me? Or maybe you have that conversation that you're dreading, that kind of um, challenging conversation that you're not eager to have. Well, I believe that walking is the most underutilized superpower that we have in both our work and our home toolbox. So that is what I believe. And I think that with walking, you end up coming up with solutions to all those scenarios I brought up at the beginning, or many, many, or not even, or it's an and, and many, many more things that you can't even imagine. And if you go out for a walk when you are feeling stuck or you need just something, nothing's clicking, get out for a walk. And I truly believe that the walking will shift you and bring you a successful outcome that you cannot get while sitting in an office or in a home office. And I don't hear you, Senya. I think you're on mute. Thank you. So if I were to summarize, I think what you're saying is if people may be stuck and they're trying to figure things out and they're kind of powering through it, maybe the best thing to do to get those new ideas is to go out for a walk. Is that right? Absolutely. I believe deeply that by walking either alone or together, and this is why I do probably 90% of my client work while walking, I believe that we come up with more creative solutions, we have um, paths for moving forward that we didn't even realize existed. We're more productive and effective than sitting in an office. And that's okay. different than most of my colleagues. So let's, br let's break that down. What field are you in? I am in life and executive coaching. In that field, what are some beliefs that your colleagues have? I would say that pretty much we meet in an office. That is a huge belief. And the reason we meet in an office is we don't want distractions. We need to be focused and we're focused when we sit and we um, want to take notes. And so if you're meeting while walking, how do you take notes? That's crazy. And so even some of my, um, I am in contact with a lot of colleagues and phenomenal coaches and they always say, how can you do that? How can you coach while walking? You have to be in an office to keep the blinders, you know, and just on task. So it's a very different method than all of my colleagues actually use. Very helpful to know. So can you describe your method a little bit before we get into how you you came to this, even had the idea, but what, it, what really is the method of walking while coaching or walking while being coached or walking while wanting to have an idea? Like what practically should you do? Absolutely. So it's for me when I'm working with a client and it, really would be similar if somebody is listening in and they're thinking, you know, how do I use this maybe with a colleague or somebody on my team or how do I use it on my own is really to, I, I actually have one of my websites is take your thoughts for a walk. I literally say, take your thoughts for a walk. We're going to take our meeting for a walk. So what do you want to accomplish? So not, you don't want to just, well, actually to, you can go out just with no agenda and see what naturally comes to you. You can also go out with an agenda and think, what do I want to focus on during this walk? And so if I'm with a client, that's one of the first things I say is, you know, what's coming up for you? Where do we want to focus our attention? And then where do we want to be at the end 
of our walk, of our time together. So creating some boundaries for us to do our work. So you can, for our viewers, they can do that as well at home or um, at work. And then really, it's just the dialogue like you would have in a sit down meeting, but you're doing it while moving. And I also use the environment to help give us clues and um, different visuals that might um, trigger things that someone is saying. And now they see a visual that actually puts um, some clarity and focus around what they're talking about. I could give an example of that that just came up, if that's helpful. Please, please go ahead. So I was just walking with a client, um, gosh, last week, I think. And she was talking about all of these things, you know, as we're working from home and we have kids at home, we have our work, we're trying to keep afloat. We have all these demands. She has um, in-laws who she's also trying to care for. So we are stretched to every, you know, every capacity possible. And she said, everything feels like it's dumping on me. And with that, she looks up and she said, oh my gosh, there are seven dump trucks lined up in front of me. There's some building happening. I said, snap a picture now. And what do those dump trucks, what are they telling you? And so we had a conversation about what this message was that the universe has given her. And she has put it on her, um, as her home screen for her phone. So every the time- dump she, trucks, The dump trucks. The dump trucks are her home screen now, the photo. And that reminds her of the priorities that we talked about and the filter she's using um, for how she wants to move forward in her life. So that's just a small example. And it happens all the time on a walk because we're in an environment that has so much stimulation coming our way. So what what one thing that you're saying reminds me of this exercise from uh, coaching, which is perspective coaching. What perspective do I want to try on? Do I want to try on the future perspective, the me in at age 80 perspective? But one perspective is what do you see outside your window? But in your case, as I'm walking, what do I see? I see leaves falling. I see the ground is cleared. I see there are a lot of people, but trying to try on perspectives from the visual stimuli that you're getting. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's crazy. Even license plates. I'll look up and a license plate will say exactly what a client is talking about. I'll say, oh, my gosh, let me send this to you. So I'm constantly sending photos. Oh, and that's something else. Just, you know, in the spirit of COVID, walking works, walking meetings work during COVID. So I do my practice. Most of my clients are out of town. Most people do not get to walk on the beach that's near, you know, near where I live. So I might be walking the beach but my client is wherever they are. I coach uh, you know, around the world. So you can do this long distance. And then if you have an aha moment or a, an aha visual, just take a photo and shoot it back and forth to each other. I understood. So people are walking on meetings either by themselves or on the phone with someone else. They can get visual stimuli and send photos to each other of what they're seeing and use it as prompts in their conversations. Absolutely. Whether coaching or not. Yeah, absolutely. If you're if you're feeling stuck, you're sitting in there and you're trying to problem solve something at work and you're just you're pulling out your hair and you're like, oh, my gosh, my brain just feels you know flat. Go outside and see what the universe provides for you. I know that sounds hokey, but I promise you there are something will switch in you. Uh, so I have had the experience with you uh, often where I'm texting you something and you'll and you'll say, great, I'll say, I'll reply later. I'm out for a walk or I'm taking my talk for a walk. Exactly. Absolutely. And the times I've done only one of your webinars, I don't know how many I've done at this point, maybe 10. One time I wasn't able to walk before and I just felt slightly off. I'm like, oh, I'm not myself. <laughs> so that's right. And I have and I have clients who literally there's a reason for one reason or another, they're not able to walk. They almost always say to me, I'm sorry, my brain's operating slower because I'm not walking with you. I don't notice it, but they do. Uh, that, all right. So in the context of this belief series, how did you come to this belief that walking is going to open up my mind, my creativity, whether I'm doing it in partnership with someone on the phone or I'm doing it on my own? How did you come to that? So I would love to say it was my own idea. However, I grew up with a dad who is, uh, he was an OBGYN by practice. And when he retired, his specialty was gynecological oncology. And when he quasi retired, he started walking with his cancer patients, the women who had cancer, and he was always out in nature with them. And if he wasn't walking with them, 
he sat in our backyard with them. He knew he needed to be outside. To be inside in a closed environment was not, it wasn't conducive to the kind of work they needed to do. So I was very young. And so I've always, it just always was normal. That's what we do. And so then I was actually walking with my husband when I um, had just graduated from graduate school, about ready to launch my practice. And I said, I know I'm gonna walk. I don't want an office. This is how I'll do my practice. It just feels right. And I wasn't thinking about my dad, but now in retrospect, I must give him some credit and I'm sure he'll watch this. So um, yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> 20 years later, I'm still walking. So I've, I've, from day one, 20 years ago, I started walking with clients and have always been doing it. And so practically, Eileen, how much do you walk oh, a day or a week? Because you walk for yourself, you walk with a client on a call, you may have more than one client in a day. So practically, how much are you walking? You know, really good question. I have one loop in particular that I do. Usually, um, let's see, I would probably say on an average, maybe six miles a day. It's not that that huge, but sometimes it could be Sometimes it could be more like 10. Um, and sometimes it's it, it can be lower too. So it depends. Okay, okay, wonderful. So you came to this idea through your own walking, through some childhood influences of observing and watching this. If people are watching us today and they're thinking, you know, maybe I will, maybe this afternoon I will, or tomorrow I'm going to switch this video call to a phone call and I'm gonna invite my colleague to go walking while I'm walking somewhere in a different city. What should they think about? So if they do want to activate this and put this into their lives, what should they do? So I would say the first thing is what you just said, try it, just give it a try. So when you are in your office or you're at home, you know, there might be some people tuning in who, well, most of us are at home still. So just give it a try. Um, it's ideal too, because you have all these people in your space, possibly, whether it's roommates, family, whoever. So it gives you another office. I, I feel like I have the most beautiful office in the world, right? So it gives you that extension. So I would say if you're doing it with somebody, mm -hmm. pick a low pressure person. So if you're, um, and what I mean by low pressure, if you are going to be trying it out at work, possibly try it with a colleague, try it with someone maybe who reports into you. I wouldn't go with a high stakes conversation your first time out of the gate. So um, go with that to begin with. Then I would also suggest, again, if you're doing this for a meeting purpose, a familiar area. When I walk with clients, I always do, for the most part, I do the same path, but if not the same, it's one that I'm familiar with. And the reason I say that is you really wanna be present. And if you're trying to figure out, oh shoot, where did I go? Did, should I be going up here? Should I go down there? We want your mind to be engaged with the person who you're with and to come as one. And so a familiar area. So low pressure, a familiar area. And then I also encourage you to really be aware of your environment. So whether it is um, license plates, whether it's dump trucks that are parked on the road, um, whether I, it's so funny, I have one person, her husband's name is Frank. Whenever we are walking, I always, when right when she brings him up, on the ground, somebody has etched in Frank on the sidewalk. And so we are it's, it's the funniest thing. So pay attention to the sidewalk. In my neighborhood, people have painted rocks all over since COVID. So there's messages on the rocks that I uh, that really speak to us. So that's what I would say is pay attention to your environment, go to a familiar area and pick a low pressure person to try it out with. And again, at the beginning of the call, just like we do with every coaching call as coaches, what do you want to focus on? What what are you hoping for? And at the end, where do you want to land? What do you want to leave this walk with? So that's your destination. As I always say to my client, let's have a destination so we make sure we accomplish what we hope to accomplish. So start with an intention and have that destination in mind. Absolutely. One other thing that people always ask me, and so this is good if you're walking with someone or alone, they always say, you know, well, how do you take notes? And I, for the most part, one thing we do know about walking, in addition to increasing problem solving ability and creativity, it also helps with memory. There is significant research that shows how much walking impacts our hippocampus. So it is really something um, that aids in that memory process. With that said, I still bring a note card usually. I love note cards. So I bring a note card and a pen in case I need to jot something down 
or your phone, you know, you could always, I text myself messages, you know, all the time. So that would be the other thing if you need to capture something here and there. Um, to use it for work, you might wanna say, hey, let's walk for half an hour and then let's go back to the office and finish up our walk. There's a great research study that um, says that we're that people are two times more creative when they've walked before they've tried to come up with a solution to something. So just putting in that walk beforehand and then go back to the office and say, now let's whiteboard this whole thing. Uh, so people on our broadcast, as you know, they love data. So if you, someone knows that they're gonna be twice as creative, twice as impactful if they walk before a meeting, that's, that's exactly. awesome. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And there's a great new book, which I actually have on order. So I, I can't say that I've read it, but I've been listening, to, I've listened to his interviews and read some articles and it's Shane O'Mara. And it's the, I wanna say it's the case for walking. Let me just see. Oh, In Praise of Walking. In Praise of Walking is his book. And um, he point blank says, walking makes us healthier, happier, and brainier. And he is a neuroscientist. So that is what the research has shown. And brainier, we all need to be brainier at work, right? And at home. And we want to be healthier and happier because we know that boosts life and work satisfaction. Wonderful. We're going to, please, if you are watching right now, what are your takeaways so far? How can you implement what Eileen is sharing about walking, whether it's one on one with someone on a phone call or by yourself? So drop drop into the comments your takeaways so far. And while you do, I will put on the screen some of the things that Eileen went out and she asked some of her co coaching clients for how does walking while having a meeting make you feel? So I've just captured a few phrases for some of them and I'll bring them up. One of your clients says it clears the fog, the mind fog when they're walking. Uh, give comments, whatever comments you have as I'm putting these up. Pardon me? Give whatever comments you have on these perspectives from your clients. Yep, and this particular client also, she is someone who can get easily distracted because again, she's working from home, which she's not used to doing. She has kids at home and in-laws that she's bombarded from every area. And she said, walking makes her focused and less distracted. And it's so counterintuitive. We think that's gonna be distracting. But no, when, she's, when we're working from home, there's not a lot of us that feel like we're as focused as we can be. So walking, it gets rid of that noise. One of your clients says this. Whoops, let's see. Sunshine. Sunshine. Yes, the power of vitamin D. Yes, yes, yes. Right, exactly. Another one says, look, it's both a mood boost plus the vitamin D. And uh, another one says that it opens up, I'll put this up in a second, that it opens up my mind and thinking. Yeah, it, it, it literally does. I, I, I keep thinking, I wish there was a way I could market walking and get, I'd be a multimillionaire. I could talk about this forever. It's so powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I Except I have to say, I'm loving during this time of COVID as we think about what's the, what's the upside, my streets in our neighborhood are packed with people walking and I've never seen so many people out all day long. So I, that's a huge upside in my mind of this period of time. One of the people watching, I don't know who it is, but someone on Facebook is saying that walking helps them craft their message and find the right words. Absolutely, I, I love that. I couldn't agree more. And before I do any talk, I take my talks for a walk. So I, I'm 100% with you. You actually take your talks for a walk more than once. You take them for a walk when you're planning them, but then also the morning of, you take them for a walk again. Absolutely. I actually usually, I, I figure out the whole talk while I'm walking, and then I take it out a few times, and I, I keep on changing it, changing it, and then I'll go the morning of again as my final, like, okay, this is when it solidifies. Yeah. And when you're taking your walk uh, for a walk the morning of, you literally don't have a presentation in front of you. You're just going through in your head what it is. My head. Yeah, so it's got to improve memory. I mean, if you've got a one hour talk and you're going through it bullet by bullet on your walk. Usually by that point. So the other times I'll have my note card and I'll be looking at my note card and what I want to bring up. Sometimes I'll have my note card with me, but usually the morning of I should have it in my head by that point. Yeah. Uh, so we have been speaking with Eileen Schaefer about what she believes, which is actually, and I can attest to this, which is different from what much of the coaching profession believes, which is that you do need to be in an office, you need to be focused, you may need to have note cards. And Eileen's telling us, no, 
drop all that. Take, so here's what I'm hearing. Take your phone, your keys, and maybe a note card and pen, and that's it, and you're walking. Absolutely, and then to follow up with that, that thank you for bringing that up. By the end of, if I'm say with a client, of course, as coaches, we want these um, sessions to be action oriented. We want you to have something to work on. We always say the the work happens between meetings, right? That's where the growth happens. And so that's when at the very end of the session, and this you could do also if you're working with somebody, um, if you're doing it with a colleague, of what are our actions? What, what are you committing to? And we do that at the very end. And so my clients will have their phones right there and I'll say, can you shoot it over to me? So they might text me what their you know um, health action is, their career action and their connection action right on the spot. And I just want to second that people are often going right into another meeting. So when you ask them to send it to you right then, they're done. And then they have it as a record for themselves and for you. Absolutely. Yep. And it's quick. Um, and that's just their quick recount of this is what I'm committing to. Yeah. I mean, as you think about people who are watching this for the first time about walking and they're thinking about implementing walking more for their lives, what else would you like to leave them with as a parting thought in terms of doing this, incorporating this into their lives? Yeah, I would say, and I say this on my website too, it is the, um, it is a totally organic, 100% proven mood booster. It's there to not use walking. You are leaving something so powerful in your toolbox and just keeping it closed up. It's like open that toolbox and start walking and you will see the benefits over time. We know there are health benefits and we know what they um, what they've told us about. We've got to get up from our desk. We need to move ideally less than an hour, but at a minimum every hour, get up and move. So we know we need it physically. So now I'm asking you to consider the mental health benefits of it. It does boost happiness, life satisfaction, and just overall increases your mood. So, so take that tool out. It is your superpower that is not being, probably not being utilized to the extent that you can. Eileen Schaefer, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And everybody, go out and for get a good walk in. Even do podcasts on walks. Do something that stimulates you on a walk if you don't feel like just taking yourself out. You've got your intention. You've got your destination, whether it's what you're creating or what you're listening to, like a podcast. Exactly. Sorry, my computer just went blank on me. Exactly. So if, if you want to just take your thoughts out, great. If you feel like I need something more than that, TED Talks, podcasts, do whatever and take it for a while. Because then you'll also remember the content. Because your memories improve it. Exactly. <laughs> a win-win. Thank you so, so much. This has been Eileen Schaefer speaking with us about what she believes that's different from other beliefs. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Enjoy the day, everybody. Thanks, everyone. We're here every day from Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific. So look forward to seeing you again tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific for 20 minutes. All the best. Bye. Go for a walk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now.